Hello, hello. How's it going? Are you guys ready for today's session? Emma, how are you doing? Evelyn, welcome. Can you guys listen to me? Yes. All right, great to hear that. So welcome. Thank you so much for connecting on time. Evelyn, can you listen to me? I think it's gonna be this time only you and I, Emma. <laughs> no, I think Francisco is coming. So how was your weekend? It was great, and I heard about you. My weekend was awesome. <laughs> well, let's say I had many things to do and I, uh, and I stayed home. I was able to rest a lot. So thank you for thank you for asking. Joel is here. Francisco, how was your weekend? It was good. I went to uh, different places. Right. So you went to different places. I can see you were partying. <laughs> okay, Joel. <laughs> how was your weekend, Joel? Well, Mike is not, is not, I don't know, active. So that might be a problem. All right, let's see. Evelyn, how was your weekend? Miss? Hi. It was Ray. I went to visit my, my father in San Miguel. So it was cool. Imagine and how's the weather in, in there? Is really, it, really hot. I, the worst. I imagine. Yeah, I imagine. I imagine how nice this weather is. <laughs> yes. oh, okay, guys. So thank you so much for connecting and thank you so much for sharing a friendly reminder and also a request. <laughs> Insta4 texted me earlier today to remind you about the importance of completing the activities, okay? Because we have until Wednesday, okay? So guys, please make sure you complete everything by Wednesday, the latest, okay? So um, let's see. If you have any question about the platform, please make sure to ask in case there is one, okay? So, what questions do you have about exercises in the platform? No questions. If there aren't any questions, I will continue with the class, but please uh, keep in mind guys that you have until Wednesday. So basically today is what are, let's see, let me share the screen. Uh, today is our class number, number, number one. No, it's not number one. Hold on. It's, it's, hold on. Just kidding. Let me go over the entire thing we've been working on. We're going to get to the very last class, and that's going to be class number, 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 boom, boom. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, it keeps going, 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 going. Come on, PowerPoint, keep going. A bit slow sometimes. It's I. Okay. Jeffrey, you're just arriving. How are you doing, Jeffrey? Okay. Hi, teacher. I'm fine. Nice to hear it. Mm -hmm. There, there are, there are not uh, energy in my house. Then I don't know how much time I will be connected. Thanks for letting me know. It happens. Okay. It happens. Thank you so much. Okay, we finished this last last class. We practice about fact or fiction, and we finished it. And this is today's lesson. Is it? Is it fourteen or fifteen? I think it's fourteen. Let's see. I love, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 14. You know, I, I think I want to finish this. <laughs> it's 14, okay? In order to 15, it's 14. I think 14, 15, 16, yeah, 14. 
Okay, so we're gonna work on this today. We have in this class, you guys are going to learn about different cultures around the world. Let me ask you this quick question. Have you ever traveled abroad in, I don't know, different countries in Central America or North America, South America, in another continent? Anybody? Today, we're gonna to talk about cultural, like, um, shot, okay? And that's gonna to be today's topic, okay? Um, so I would love to hear if any of you have traveled abroad. I know there must be one. So anybody? Well, tell us. Yes, I've just been to Guatemala and Honduras. That's all. Mm. How was the experience in Honduras? I want to go to Honduras, never been to that place. Well, being honest with you, I just went to a remote place because I was doing a mission in my university, donating some clothes and food to a poor uh, community. And I, I didn't see the big city and, and that kind of places but it was it was good i bet that is the most rewarding experience you can have so if you ask me what would i choose i would choose what you did okay you. Uh, you will have chances to go to visit you know other places but then what you receive back from this tiny actions is priceless happy faces people like saying thank you that's really cool thank you so much for sharing never been to i want to go to roatan uh, you know and it's then, a beautiful island is it right i think it is okay thank you for sharing anybody else who have traveled abroad guys Me, teacher. Uh -huh. Tell us experience, please. Um, I have been in Guatemala, in Jovitenango and Antigua. And I traveled with my uh, friends at, um, five years ago. Would you go back if you had a chance to go? Sorry, teacher. Would you go back if you have the yes. chance? Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about this today, okay? These are the questions we're gonna discuss, but I want you to watch the video. I know maybe some of you already did it, but I still want to play it, okay? Because I want you to pay attention and I want to give you the questions before so you are able to answer after we watch the video. First one, have you ever had a culture shock or a cross-cultural experience? Okay, pay attention to what the speakers are gonna say. Okay, so basically you guys already shared with me, maybe uh, you were not expecting this experience to be like this, but then it happened like that. Any cross-cultural things, how different cultures are in comparison to El Salvador? So that's gonna be uh, our discussion after watching this video, which is not that long, only half an hour, <laughs> only five minutes. <clears throat> okay, and next one, what did the speaker say about Rio de Janeiro? I think it's, something is missing here. Pay attention to that, okay? And write the ideas down and you're going to share with me, okay? Pay attention, I'm gonna be asking specific things, okay? Don't disconnect yourself while watching this video. Uh, what did the speaker say about Peru, Lima, Peru? What did the speaker say? What the experience in there? And the last one about uh, Pes uh, Tepoztlan, Mexico. What did they say? What did he say or she say about these uh, three places? Uh, you just need to write down some specific details and then you're going to share with the whole class, all right? So here we go. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen because I'm gonna share what we need in order for us to answer these questions. So here we go, one second. Pay attention if you have already watched this video, I think it's okay to watch it again. 
because it's a really good one. I like it. Everything it says and all the cultural things happening in there is good to see. Here we go. That's why I'm going to play it. All right, here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Right here, I think. Boom. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four, and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden, and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different, because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek, and they shake hands. So I went to kiss, like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that, but it's strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. 
This is Hillary Garcia in Tepatzlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. I personally like this video and everything that is in here, like many ideas to talk about, uh, many great experiences that we can encounter here. So I would love to hear what you think about it, okay? So I know you watched the entire video and maybe for a second time, since you might have seen it already on the platform. So let's discuss these questions, guys. And I wanna hear everyone, but it's not possible if I do it like this. But I want to, I want, to, I really want to make sure you guys are with me here. So please, uh, if you watch the video, if you are here, like present, like in the class, raise your hand because I want to make rules for this discussion. I don't want to send one with no partner because maybe you simply connect, but you're not here. Gustavo's here. Thank you. Joel is here. Emma's here. Only three. And the rest, okay, Jose, Joel, Emma, Gustavo, Melissa's here. Angie, are you here with us? Yes. Okay, Evelyn, are you? Angie's there. Okay. Yes, yes, teacher. All right, so everybody's here today. Wow, I'm, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> okay, so let's go and talk. Okay, let me share with you guys again the the questions okay talk with your partner remember what the speaker said about uh when they when they compare because a cross-cultural thing is when uh you know you make this comparison between the country where you are and with that country where you that you visit now that's the point what did the speaker from rio de janeiro said about uh her visit to sweden okay how was it different with uh what they do in there what about uh, Lima, Peru? What did he or she said about this place in comparison to, to where uh, they visited? And, and the last one, okay, this guy who married an American uh, girl. So that's gonna be it. Now, uh, let me go back because in case you want to screenshot this. Uh -huh, these are the ones, couple of seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, talk to your partners, please. Ex try to expand, try to see what you have, what you understood, and that's the point. Here we go. This, this is lonely. Nobody's here with you, right? Come on, these guys. They were, I don't know what happened, but I assigned you with two other people. Hmm. So tell me, Emma. Hmm. 
What do you remember from the speaker about Rio de Janeiro? What did she say? Sir, of the yes, of music. Well, about the first one. I don't remember exactly everything, but I had some, I remember some things about it. It was about trans transportation, right? It, I confused Rio de Janeiro with Lima, Peru, because one of them talk, uh, talks, yeah, talk about, about that about the transportation hmm. well let me tell you that that rio de janeiro lady didn't talk about transportation that was lima peru hmm. interesting and, and what did he say about transportation <laughs> Well, the, the, I think that Emma, I barely hear each other. What about if we go back to the main station? Because there are some people waiting there. Okay. Emma, all right, all right. Thank you. There were some here, but now nobody's here. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, there, nobody's here. Oh, interesting. Let me, let me call them to join us here. Okay. And, but let, while they're doing so, I'm going to give them one extra minute. So, um, well, let's try to recall, Emma. Rio de Janeiro was the lady. She talked about uh her visit to sweden right and she said about kissing on the chicks and how they do it differently when they greet others in that country she said that she is uh she's used to do this in her country like uh in rio de janeiro and when she did this in the other country they felt as if she was invading their private space because of this you know way of reading and in the second one was about the one you said which is about um the what uh, like here in el salvador right like uh like this all these coasters you know and the last one do you remember yes the last one was the the man that is married with an american Woman. And he said something about a sandwich and that and right it's it's about a sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. a and sandwich. I remember something about it, but yes. A sandwich and something else at lunchtime. Meals. Mm -hmm. It was a yes, milk. A sandwich and a soup. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this soup, I mean, he was expecting something more, right? I think everybody's back. Guys, I don't know if you had enough time to share. I think uh, you didn't, but um, I want to hear everyone here because some of you, some disconnected and that, you know, that's why I wanted to call everyone back to the main session. So who wants to share about the first one? the first uh, speaker intervention or ideas on the Rio de Janeiro. What did she say? What was the experience and how was she different? Well, she felt uh, a bit strange for the way they greet. Mm. 
What is the way, Gustavo, they greet each other? Uh, well, uh, she said in Brazil, uh, just shake hands. And she, she, uh, she always uh, greet by kissing. And, and people say, hey, you are uh, invite my personal space. Yeah, okay, very it's good. Great. Exactly. And what about our country, guys? How do we greet each other? Well, it's a mix, maybe a mix of, of all. It, it depends, uh, it depends, uh, I don't know, the, the, the friends or the people with with you, with you have the relations, uh, close friends, maybe just a hug, and for uh, female friends, maybe a kiss. Uh, but uh, in a formal way, just uh, uh, shake hands. Okay, Gustavo, have you ever hugged another man? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Jose, have you ever hugged, like hold another, um, another man, Jose? Yes, I, I, I have had more than one. Okay, Jeff. I had some good friends. Jeff, have you ever hugged another man? Uh, Sorry, teacher, can you repeat me the question? Yes, have you ever had like another man? The question is if I have another. If the question is if uh, you have ever had another man. Another man, <laughs> sorry, I can understand your question. Hugged like a like hold like when you hold somebody. Mm. Uh, it just teacher I, when when I was with my friend I I used to how do you say saludar? Great. Okay. To my friend uh, usually with a handshake. And someone I house my friend, but when he is a uh, one person that I don't know, I only give a handshake. Exactly, exactly. I'm I'm glad to hear because this is a question that I ask, and they say, "No, teacher, I don't do that." You no, know, I'm a man, and I'm not gonna be doing this thing. But that depends on our beliefs, right? But I was asking that because um, what? Your father, for example, you can hack your father. That's true love, right? And not even maybe, um, not even what? Not even, or not only a hack, you can even maybe kiss on the forehead, which means respect, right? That's, so that's different. That's why I was asking you that. And then exactly like Gustavo said, it depends, right? It depends on the context. If you're like friends, you're not gonna be like maybe shaking hands. You basically, you, you do this, like a uh, fist bump. I think that's the way you call it. But then um, depends. Maybe between ladies, you kiss the chick. This is not common like within two men in here in El Salvador. But then that, that depends. Angie, how do you greet your friends? Sometimes if uh, they are a close friends, I hold them. And, and sometimes um, I can kiss in, in their cheek. Yes. Cheeks is very common, right? Something that I have seen is like uh, some people, uh, like between men, uh, this is like they do this, like a tap on the back, like this, and they they hug, but they do this, a, a, a tap, which means uh, on the back. That's the way they do it, and I think I I, I have done this. That's different. 
Okay, let's see, Evelyn, what about question number two? Let me show you question number two. What do you remember and how is it similar to El Salvador's? Number, number three, I'm sorry. What did the speaker say about Lima, the road Lima? I remember they say, the, uh, he say something about the, the bus or the public transportation. Uh, but I don't remember. I thought because I have bad connection to that today. So I only remember that they say the public transportation was different. Uh, I think because we, they call the people to go to the port. Okay, yes. And Angie, what else can you add? I think is the same in the system transportation. And by the way, um, the bus is identical with El Salvador. La vacía, la vacía, la vacía. And you don't see any seats available, right? Uh, okay. I can see that, you know, here, similar. Tres y dos, tres y dos. Tres y dos, tres y dos. Tópense, tópense, llevan ropa <laughs> and then like, yeah. El Salvador, the more people you get, the more money you get, <laughs> the more money you make. Okay, and how about the last one? This is uh, the speaker number three. Let's listen to Joel. Joel, you've been kind of shy today. Joel, what can you tell us about number, th number four? Number four, about yeah. Mexico, right? Yeah, Mexico. Well, I just can recall that he was talking about the food that he had the best food that he was used to have in his country and that's all was he married or single actually Mary. i don't remember the teacher Mary. He, was, he was married and that's like that's the point of, of his like um ideas let's say what let's happened say uh huh he said that his wife gave her uh, give uh, a sandwich for lunch. Exactly. So he says that he used to what? Have like the main dish, a lot of food, meat, chicken and all that. And he was given only a sandwich and a soup. A sandwich. Right. Which, uh, and the lunch time, right? Mm -hmm. And he was expecting for some more. Okay. So that was the video, but I wanted to discuss this video, guys. It was a really good one, actually. Um, I think I'm going to going to watch it again. I like all this music playing on the background. And now let's talk about this topic. I Maybe you have seen it already, noun phrases containing relative clauses. And we're going to focus on a specific structure today, in case you have seen it already. So, um, but before I do that, I would like you to write these questions down because we are going to be working on them. Question number one, Emma, can you read the, the three questions we have on the screen, please? Only read it. Okay, and first, could you be nervous about being far away from your family? Two, could you feel insecure about traveling alone? And number three, Will be enthusiastic about making new friends. Thank you so much, Emma. There's a you missing here. I'm sorry. Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? So this is all when traveling, guys. When traveling, um, how can you answer or what would your answer be for these three questions? So that's going to be uh, after we go over some structure. Okay, maybe you want to write them down. Okay, these are based on the explanation provided on the platform. Let me make the correction because uh, there's a, a subject missing. And I think, um, let me see. So you want to write it down and you also want to uh, share it. I mean, you want to share your answer. So here we go. These are the questions once again. It won't take you that long. Write them down because we are going to use them to, to talk.
Let's see, I think somebody already sent the questions. Okay, that's easier, And you thank you so much. So would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? And would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? So let's talk about this structure, guys. I want you to really help me out with this. Uh, let's see. Grammar structures, okay? We have as a subject, and this is what we're gonna be using, one thing, okay? One thing, and then something, and then we can say two people or more than one people, this is plural form. So how can we use this structure to talk about the questions I just gave you? That is the point. Okay, first thing is one thing we can have that. This is optional. You can you can add it or not. I really missed is yes. this is our focus. One thing I really miss is something that or you can omit, you can leave out this something I'll be nervous about is. And two people or three people who or that depends, well, both are accepted. I'll email every day are. In this case, we have to make sure our bird to be agrees with the subject because it's two is plural. Therefore, we have to say are. So now, I just gave you some questions. I would like you to use this structure and try to think how you can answer following this structure. One thing I really miss is, or maybe you wanna change it, change it and adapt it to the question I just gave you. And something that I'll be nervous about is, okay? And try to create one answer to each of the questions I just provided you. If you don't want to, uh, as of now, answer to the questions, fine. But keep in mind when traveling, how you can use this structure. And I would love to hear you, uh, maybe open your mic and go ahead and, and give me some examples. So this is all when traveling, okay? Let's only focus on this. So start writing or, or maybe open your mic and create one example of each, one thing something and two like this. I'll give you two minutes. In case you want or have any questions, just let me know. Yes. I have answered the first one. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, um, one thing that I really miss is the comfort of my house. Not quite sure about being nervous about uh, leaving my family, you know. I mean, probably yes, but I haven't been that far away yet. So it would be an interesting experience. Okay, and how about Joel taking advantage of your participation? How about the plural form? Two people. What? Sorry? How about the plural form? The plural form. Two people, two, whatever it is. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be doing this. Which one? How can you complete this structure? The last one. This one, last one. I'm sorry, I'm lost. Can you use the plural form? The plural form, like, because I heard your ideas, uh, like this one, and that's that's good. And can yes. you now think about one idea where you use the plural form of uh, like okay. two people, like this example, two people who I'll email every day are, or two maybe friends or two, Maybe you can even say two things. The point is of using plural R. That's my, 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 my request for you, if you can do it. All right, give me a sec, please. 
while you do that, anybody else who would like to share with us your ideas, guys? Thank you guys are writing things down, really focusing on this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, because I don't have much time, I'm gonna show you, yeah, like 15 minutes. I'm gonna show you the structures given, okay? And I want you to think uh, about how you can complete the ideas with the structures given. So here we go, let's see. Give me a second, here we go, this is the one. Uh -huh. Okay, use this, these ideas. This one is that's the formula. You need to have the subject, which is uh, one thing, the relative clauses, additional information. I really missed the verb to be, which must agree the subject and the complement. So now let's use this idea. All this, I'll be nervous about, I'll be anxious about, I'll be comfortable. Um, and I'll be curious about, and I'll be enthusiastic about it. I'll, and I'll uh, be fascinated by, it. okay? That's, those are the ones that we have based on the, on the video. So I'm gonna give you some time. I want you to start thinking how you can complete these ideas, you know, and then we're going to share it. Take some time, answer, uh, answer these questions, please. Complete the ideas. Maybe I have some, some ideas already. Hmm, interesting. I want to read them this time. I'll be anxious about. Ah, you after this one, uh, that's, that's a good idea, uh, by the way, Gustav. Now, I'll be anxious about. You delete is. I'll be anxious. Maybe. One thing I'll be anxious about. Ah, I see. If, if you add one thing, mm -hmm. that, then it makes sense. So just complete the idea. Then one thing I'll be anxious about is not knowing the language very well. Because like the way you send it without the one thing and all that, yeah, something was missing. But now that I think about the one thing, it makes sense. That is, that is a good, good example. Especially if the if the language is is not that common, right? Okay. Yeah, in that context. Yes, I see. All right. Anybody else, please take some time, share your ideas. I'll give you uh, three more minutes or or maybe four minutes, and think about the context. You know. Emma, go ahead. Share. I'd be nervous about this, telling my dad I lost my wallet. <laughs> and I and you have a lot of money right in there. Mm -hmm. No, but my documents are there. <laughs> All your documents, your uh, David card with millions of dollars. Hmm. 
when you have to do the the immigration process with with food tell me more about it angie uh is that because of of what what it tastes are they really like i don't know no because delicate? no no because uh the immigration official uh they ask you if you can open the um uh the the suitcase Okay, so and you have to show all the food and and you don't and don't you know how many food uh throw in the trash ah uh, i see that made me feel anxious mm -hmm. i can see i can see okay all right that's the point okay then uh anybody else okay thank you so much angie Guys, I'll give you two more minutes. Please uh, share more ideas. I'd be curious about to about is is knowing the the new culture about the new country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Cultural things, right? Because cultural experiences. Okay, great. Um, so since I don't, I don't see more uh, examples or ideas here on the chat, and time is going really fast. I'm going to go back to the question because I really want you to interact with the questions. Okay, uh, maybe this time you want to expand on your ideas, and I want you to ask each other, and maybe you take turns. When traveling to another country uh, and then you want to complete one answer to each of these questions and then um, you just recall one thing I will be uh, nervous about is this uh, one thing or two thing or something some I will uh, feel insecure about uh, is this you want to use the adjective that I have provided you on like in these questions, okay? Nervous, insecure, and enthusiastic, okay? And then, um, or maybe you just want to go ahead and provide your um, answers based on the context given in here, considering your family or traveling alone or making new friends, okay? So I'm gonna give you maybe three more minutes on this. I will create groups of three and you go ahead and, and ask, please guys, ask questions and provide your answers because I don't see many examples on the chat that tells me that you might not be writing or thinking about your answers. Not all of you guys, because I see one, let's see how many, one, two, only two examples and those who already participated, but we are connected eight, so that's not possible. So I'm gonna create the rooms. I'll be stopping by in each of your uh, rooms to see if you are really speaking, okay? If uh, the person who you are assigned with is not, is not speaking, just leave the room and come back to the main session, okay? Please do that uh, and start speaking. Here we go. Let me see. I'm going to recreate the groups. I'm gonna make... Uh, this time only three groups and speak as much as possible. You can open your cam if you would like to speak. Sorry, sorry. I think I was speaking. Uh, I don't remember the question. Do you have it? Okay. Yeah, I have it. Will you be nervous about being far away from your family? Mm, I don't know because I have only traveled with my family, but I think that it depends. Uh, one thing I've been nervous about is 
being with my family in the same country, mm -hmm. but in a different place, for example, uh, in another state or that you know that you are with your family, but they are no close with you. Okay. Um, I think I I don't feel I don't feel nervous uh, if I been far away from my from for my family from my. In the country, uh, maybe it's no problem. I don't feel insecure because uh, I know maybe the most most place. But uh, for example, if I travel uh, out the country, uh, Yeah. I I think that was very difficult and frustrated. <laughs> hey, that's that's a great point. <laughs> yes. What what she will do? Um. Perhaps maybe I try. We to... don't we don't have to travel to China. Uh, I really don't like. Uh, uh, that's why most of the China people, because most of the people try Sorry? to Hello, hello, thank you so much. Guys, uh, thank you for uh, taking advantage of the time given. I heard you speaking, good ideas, you know. Thank you so much. And that's the point, that you use your time wisely. I don't know if you were able to answer all these questions, but I heard all of you speaking when I, you know, joined your rooms. 
So thank you so much for doing so. Um, maybe some of you would like to share what you heard from your peers or maybe your own uh, answers. Who would like to share? Raise your hand. So somebody who hasn't participated, please. Angie, you have participated. <laughs> okay, so maybe, uh, so tell me, let's see, anybody. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Let's see, I don't know. Raise your hand, please, to participate. We don't have much time, like two minutes. Just to say one thing I will be nervous about being far away from my family is, Jose, yes. Yeah, one thing that really made me he feel nervous is getting lost. Okay, that's a good point. Now, if you are, especially if you're like walking, right? I don't, I don't know, not driving. Because if you're driving yeah. now, we're blessed with the GPS, that's easier. <laughs> okay, let's see, anybody else? One more idea, please. Um, when traveling to another country, uh, would you feel insecure about traveling alone? One thing I will feel insecure about traveling along is this. Try to stick to the formula, please, anybody? I can see, come on guys, only one participation, that's all I need. Okay, it's fine, you don't wanna talk today, it's okay. Guys, uh, please, if you have any, if you, if you have any, any, any question, right, just go ahead and ask me anything about, you know, your platform exercises tomorrow because we have to have it ready by Wednesday, the latest, okay? So, Jeffrey, do you have any question? Teacher, I have one question. Is this the last one class of the module? Because I received, received a message one week ago and said it, this day is the last class of the sorry is the this day finished the module i don't oh, know no it's it's until wednesday 23rd ah, okay yeah it's tomorrow we still have to put up with me and then and then by wednesday is the last day wednesday two more classes and we're going to finish uh well wednesday and you have until midnight to complete everything that's what they used to do i don't know if they changed the thing the thing is that they they sent me a message earlier today to remind you about finishing everything as soon as possible and the message goes like this if you if you give me one one minute or less i'm gonna read it it says oh here it is it says uh, like this Ah, uh, desea informar un recordatorio que estamos a dos clases de finalizar, no a dos clases, dice. El módulo es observar que la mayoría de alumnos no están al día dentro del curso. Uh, es, a este día tendrían que estar completados, uh, dice, las sesiones y no sé qué, cuatro, cinco y seis. Y, a, y para mañana, que es martes, les piden el final exam. Entonces, este, luego dice que hasta mañana a la medianoche le va a dar para hacer el examen, va a ser nuevo. Así que, por favor, vámonos las pilas y mañana vamos a dejar un, una buena parte de la jornada para asegurar que todos se miren el, el exam, mañana, el final exam. ¿Ok? Así que eso vamos a hacer mañana, muy probable parte de la clase, todos trabajando en el examen y concluyendo con todo lo necesario, porque hasta la medianoche del día de mañana, martes 22, va a ser habilitado. Eso es lo que mandan a decir, ¿ok? Así que sí. ahí te la aviso. <ríe> Cuídense mucho. See you tomorrow. Bye, bye. Póngale ganas ahí, guys. Tomorrow. Ya casi lo logramos. Good night. See you tomorrow.